guys, it's Ingrid with Care Tutti, and I'm back after a long hiatus to share with you this adorable um, tag that I made using Sherry Baldi's Bestie PNG file. Um, and if you love those doe eyes, definitely check her shop out. Originally, I was going to um, do something like this where I'm showing here where I took the, the file that I was sent and I downloaded it into, or I opened it with Photoshop, and I used Photoshop to color it in um, instead of manually. I used a fill tool, and it was very vibrant, um, as you could see there. Um, I printed it on 110-pound cardstock, which is the same stuff that I'm using down below to watercolor, and it is a pretty good quality. It's not watercolor paper, obviously, but it is, um, it holds watercolor pretty well. And I use, a lot of times I use a lot of water and it still does a good job. So, um, instead I wanted to do an altered tag, which is what I'm working on here. And I wanted to go with a little bit more soft look. So I decided to go with watercolor and instead of using the original, which was a hot pink and red, which you guys know is one of my favorite color combos, I decided to do a um, purple, which I don't use that much, and then like a hot pink with it. So it's kind of my version of a muted down version of that. And um, I wanted it to coordinate with the papers that I had chosen, which are some Prima papers that you'll see in a little bit. Um, and a lilac cardstock that I'm going to use. So um, what I really want to say about the watercolor, um, first of all, these are uh, very easy to, to um, go over. The design is super adorable. And um, I'm not really like sticking by any rules. I'm not even staying in the lines necessarily. I'm use letting the watercolor kind of just dictate where the paint goes and I like that look so um, this was a great way to showcase that now if you want to be a little bit more careful and you want to stay within the lines then absolutely um, by all means but pretty much what I'm doing here is I'm just building um, the watercolors and um, in this case I'm drawing the purple because I went to go in with the hot pink and then I realized that it was going to bleed into the purple and make a mess. The purple would bleed into the red, the red into the purple. So I went ahead and um, dried. Another thing you can do is using a paper towel, you can soak up the water. And um, the color palette that I was using before was the Jane Davenport. I think it's called the Brights palette. This palette here is the um, Decadent Pies by Prima. And when I was looking at the Jane Davenport um, paints, which you can buy actually at Michael's and you can use your 40% off coupon. Um, she also has a neutral palette um, for faces and such, skin tones. But I was looking online for different reviews and I saw a lot of great reviews on this palette so I decided to get it, it instead. I feel like they're both very comparable as far as the consistency and the textures. Um, it's probably more on personal preference. So um, the Prima one I did buy on Amazon. So here I am coloring her hair in and I used um, kind of a light brown, kind of dirty blonde color, kind of to match my daughter's hair color. But when I finished, and I see here in a minute, I'm doing her eyes blue to match my daughter, I realized that... Um, I don't like it. Um, it's matching the skin tone a little bit too much. And so I decided to add some darker brown into it. And I think that makes a good, um, a good contrast with it. I also added some pink on the cheeks and I messed up with that as well because I had dirty water and I didn't clean it out. So I had to redo that. But um, here I'm fussy cutting and I just wanted to show that when I fussy cut, I do not move the scissors. Instead, I move the um, the paper around with my left hand. And uh, I messed up again. I smeared the paint, so I had to go back and dry it. But it's okay because it turned out well in the end. And I'm telling you that I messed up this much so that you know that if you mess up, it's okay. It'll work out. 
Um, I am leaving a um, little bit of white space um, when I fussy cut, um, and that's just preference. I've seen it both ways. Um, one trick that I do like to do is when I have something that's textured, for example, her skirt, even though I'm, you know, I, I'm not going to follow it exactly like right there, but I'm going to squiggle my, is that a word, my scissors so that it gives it more texture so it looks like it's more a part of the skirt. Um, and before I start, I always remove as much of the white paper as possible. So um, originally when I filmed this, um, it was real time, but it was a way too long video. Um, and I was asking how many people clean up. Um, so I'll ask you again, how many people um, clean up after they're done with their with their stuff? I do it like half the time. <laughs> um, so here I'm going to make a tag. And those of you that have followed my channel know that um, I don't like to cut. So what I'm doing is I'm just eyeballing where I think I want the tag to lay, just depending on her size. And um, here I think she's about uh, two inches and then she's about three inches across there and about five inches long um, for those. And that's how long I made her. When you get the file, you can pick whatever size you want. If you want to make her large, if you want to make her smaller, um, you can do so. So here I'm just eyeballing a tag. Um, I'm just going with it. At first, I almost messed it up. What I do is I use the piece from the first cut to mimic the second part because that makes it, um, what's the word I'm looking for, um, symmetrical. And I'm not very good at cutting, which you see, but I hide it because I just dress stuff. So um, again, I don't like to measure. Um, so I'm just kind of eyeballing it here. I know I want this piece of paper on the inside. So I'm trying to think of the best way to do it. I just cut it into a strip and I cut it a little bit smaller than the actual the original tag and then I've never done this before but I used um, I outlined it in pencil and then I just went in like a quarter of an inch less and I don't like to mess around when it comes to paper especially papers that I like to hoard a little bit no I'm not a hoarder just paper um, but it actually worked out so um, so that's good. I was kind of sweating bullets once I started doing it, thinking I could just ruin this piece of paper and then what am I going to do with it? So, um, but it worked out. So you can't really see from here, but there is a um, gap in the lilac. There's probably about a quarter of an inch all the way around. And then I'm using some tape to tape it down. And originally I was going to do it like dog-eared up at the top, but I decided later not to do that. And then I also mess up one other thing is I remove the backing of the tape before I distress. So I had to hold on to it and I <laughs> with sticky fingers. So, um, and I do want to do a disclaimer. You see how fast I'm pulling that off? Well, that's because this is like at four times the speed. Um, it does not always come off that fast if you've worked with it. Um, another tip that I have is I have this little bin at, and I got it in the, I think it was at Dollar Tree in like the um, home goods section and it looks like crystal and it's really cute um, and I just keep all my garbage scraps in there so that I don't have to, um, you know, run to the garbage pail every time. So I've never called it a garbage pail. I don't know why I said that. But um, here I'm using a Prima tool, and I'm just distressing the edges, and I go to town with that thing. Now, you don't need this tool. I've said this before. You can just use your scissors. Um, but with this tool, you can kind of save your hands for sure. Um, so if you're kind of like me and sometimes don't pay attention when you're crafting, you might um, hurt your fingers like I might have maybe. Um, so here I'm I'm uh, folding over and I decide yeah I'm going to dog ear the bottom edge instead. It just looked cuter to me. So I'm going to glue um, the top of it back down. I'm going to glue that down flat and then I'm going to glue that back down. I think you're going to see my head so I apologize in advance for that. Um, and I go around the edges and then just bring up more of the paper just to give it a more distressed um, look. And um, I don't know how many of you guys have this Prima paper pad, the black and white, but it's super cute. Um, originally, 
on this paper, this is another Prima line, I was going to use the back side, which is like a rose pattern. And so I start cutting out this tag, but I'm still thinking at this point that I might use the, the rose, as you saw there. But once I turned it around, I knew it did not, um, nope, it did not meet my expectations. <laughs> my, my purples were off, so it didn't, I did not like it. And I like this a little bit better. So um, I'm just trying to fit fiddle with it to see how much um, paper I want. And I'm trying to, I think the top said, um, oh, I can't remember, This Is Us or something like that. And so I thought that would be cute to leave but you end up not seeing it because of her big bow on top of her head. <laughs> um, and I'm just taking the paper here and I'm crinkling it and then distressing it some more because that's what I'm going for. I want it to be really distressed and shabby looking. So um, I kind of fiddle with different edges and how it's going to go. And I really wanted the text to stand out, but it didn't. Um, and it didn't look right if only this stuck out or us stuck out. So I end up covering it anyhow. So um, let's see here what we're going to do. Oh, I hole punch um, the top of the tag to make it an actual tag, you know, and I was looking for my reinforcers. And then at the end, I end up not even using it. I end up covering it. You'll see. So um, this is a little basket that I have that has my flowers that I've gotten from Aldi Express. Is that the name of it from China? And um, I saw Rosa Gomez here on YouTube. And I think your list may um, also I think that's who. And then, of course, um, the girls over at Loaded Envelopes Galore, um, Michelle and Anna and um, Robin and Diane and um, Laura all shop from there as well. So I've ordered some things and I've had um, good, good results from them. So speaking of, um, oh, and these are very cute flowers. They're comparable to the wild orchid crafts not quite the same quality but they're they're nice and they're a fraction of the price so um if you can find them i you know i i would i definitely keep buying from them so um speaking of michelle i wanted to say she was actually the one that um invited me over to be a design team member for the besties girls and so now you're going to see some projects from me featuring these adorable um, PNG files with these big doe eyes. Um, and I already have planned what I'll do next month, and I think it, it'll be really cute. Um, I'm going to um, be doing a, um, showing you how you can edit these girls in your iPads using Procreate. So Procreate is a um, editing program and it's a lot cheaper than having Photoshop. So I thought that would be a good alternative. So um, here I just layered down some lace, then layered another piece of that Prima, the gray and white paper underneath her. And I just glued it all down, kind of not um, thinking about it too much. Um, I've already said that sometimes when I overanalyze and try to make things perfect, they don't come out perfect. They um, are a hot mess. <laughs> um, and then I am just trying to figure out what I'm going to do. I actually struggled a little bit with the flowers. When I first started putting the flowers down, I wasn't sure if they really went. Um, I started by putting this stamen, is that how you say it? Stamen, uh, down. Um, and oh, another thing is I'm using this crazy tacky glue. So, so far you've seen me use three different types of adhesives, which is ridiculous. But as I'm loading the stamen, if you look down at that glue bottle, you see it's like a huge glue bubble is going to appear. And it's crazy. That glue is great. It glues anything down. But uh, two things is it will come out of the lid. Even if you have it upright, you have to like shake it down, let the glue go down and then wipe it off. Um, but the other thing is it, do you see that thing? Um, it's crazy. I, oh my gosh. Anyways, um, I tried to salvage some of the glue and use it, but it was a mess. And that leads me to the other part of it. It 
got all over my nails and it literally just like melts your nail polish right off. Um, if you can see my nails right now, they look nothing like when I did the video, which is uh, frustrating. So um, anyways, back to the flowers. So I decided to um, build the flowers up and um, and I wasn't sure at first, but then I started thinking, um, you know, when I originally got this image, it was a girl on a beach with a pail and a puppy. And I asked Michelle if the images can be altered a little. And she said yes. And um, she said, yeah, she could just be a little ballerina. And then I realized, yep, that's exactly what she's going to be. She's going to be a little ballerina. So I, when I edit it in um, Photoshop, I just... Um, I just deleted the the pail and the puppy and then the sand underneath her. But you could always just cut it out. But I wanted to tell you that because if you ever do download files and they come with something that you know you're not going to use, you can always repurpose it and use it for something else. Just, you know, think outside the box. So that leads me to the flowers is that first I knew that I wanted to do a group of three because, you know, the rule of three. But then I thought, oh, since she's a ballerina, the flowers can be her um, bouquet after the show. And so then, of course, it made me fall in love with the image even more, um, as you can see here. And um, what I'm going to do is using the scraps from the um, when I cut out the clip art I'm going to just take a piece and I'm going to write and I was trying to think what should I write and then it dawned on me since she's a ballerina I'm gonna write the word dance on it um, and so um, you're gonna see me kind of trace that out in just a minute but I was thinking I forgot that she has that bow on top of her head and she's got a center in it, but I knew, oh, and it actually looks cute now that I look at it on camera with the button, but I wasn't sure if the button would go. Um, I've got this big bottle of little centers and stuff, and um, I was digging through, and then I found that center that I also got at AliExpress, and so I decided to go ahead and layer those, and I think that they look really cute. And I used my glue again, and I think this is where it actually, um, yep, yeah, there it goes. It sticks to my nails. But the other funny thing I did is I touched my hair at one point here. Like I was kind of thinking, what am I going to do with something? And, um, like I kind of like scratched my head, like I was thinking, and I got the glue in my hair and, uh, I had to take my hair down and, um, uh, yeah, it was stuck in a little clump, but anyways, I got it out. So all is good. So what I did is I wrote, the word dance out with a mechanical pencil and then using a micron o2 pen i just went over it and usually when um, i draw something out with pencil it's more to give me the spacing because i usually end up um, changing the letters a little bit with the with the pen or marker or whatever um, here I'm doing like faux calligraphy and so you've probably already heard on the down strokes you want to thicken the lines and you want to leave the lines for the upward strokes to be regular. So you can see here on my D where I would go down on the bottom part of the D that's thicker and then the top part. So anyways, um, and a lot of people ask me, you know, about my writing and stuff and I think I mentioned it before, um, my fourth grade teacher hated my handwriting and thought it was awful. So, um, because I didn't write cursive like everybody else, I had my own little twist on it. So, um, I'm definitely a, a big believer of, oh, there you saw my head. Sorry. Um, I'm a big believer of, you know, do just because everybody else does it one way, it doesn't mean that it can't be done another way. And now people love my handwriting, which is, you know, unfathomable to me because I've always thought it was not that nice. So sometimes you might think your stuff's not nice and then, um, it is to other, someone else. So, um, anyways, I'm going to take the tag here and I'm going to distress it a little bit. So, um, first I'm going to take the leftover of the hair color that I had used and with some water and then I'm just going to um, get some little dabs of paint all over it 
and I'm going to dry it. And as I'm drying it, I realize that I want to add a little bit more pink to um, pull out the pink in in her dress and in the papers. So, and then I realized I didn't, um, I didn't erase it enough. So, um, also I'm going to distress the edges. Maybe I do that first, uh, just a little bit with the, the same color, the brownish, yellowish color that I was using. And I think after that, then I add the the pink splatters in just a minute and then I'm also going to distress it so um nope yep there you go um this is like my third time filming this so this voiceover so I am I can't remember what part is what but um my tag is almost done and honestly she didn't need much because she was so adorable so um I'm just going to place this down here and um, this time I decided to use my uh, Scotch Quick Dry. Um, and originally it was going to go kind of upward, but then I kind of like things to be square sometimes. That's my, I'm kind of an all or nothing personality and it needs to be either very askew or uh, very straight. So um, it kind of drives me nuts. Here I'm taking some Dilutions White Linen and I'm going to grab my mat back out. Um, because it was just what I had. I couldn't find my Ranger um, pad. And I'm just going to put some on the edge here and then taking my brush that already had some water on it, I'm just going to go all over and splatter the white paint. And this gives it just a really shabby look. Um, I'm going to go through and dry because that um, the Dilutions isn't completely opaque. So I didn't know if I wanted to add more and of course I'm a more is more person so of course I did and I end up using every little bit of um, paint but it's funny because there's more splatters there than there were um, on her <laughs> but um, maybe I should aim for the mat next time so um, next I'm going to take the seam binding and this one is um, Persian lilac I believe and then I have white as well, and I was trying to go, I think it's cream actually, um, trying to see which color looks best, and the cream just blends too much with the background, so I'm just going to cut this, and I'm not measuring, I am just eyeballing what I think I like it to be fluffy, so I just wanted it to go around as many times as possible. This is very forgiving. Um, so I'm going to, I'm just going to leave it like this, I just wrapped it around my fingers, and then I'm going to cut a piece to go around the middle. And then I realize that, ah, uh, it's too small. I can't do a bow with that. So I just grab some twine on my desk and I'm going to use the twine instead. And I actually end up um, liking it and leaving it instead of cutting the, the little tails off. So you'll see that. Um, I like how my pinky finger <laughs> goes up. That's very um, sophisticated of me. <laughs> Um, anyway, so, um, just fluff out your bows and, um, isn't this a great little bow? Oh, I love these. I love adding these to like all my projects. So, um, and that's where I'm deciding, oh, I think I kind of like the little white, um, pieces. And, um, then I remember that I'm not going to waste that little piece that I had originally cut. And so, oh, and see, I'm covering up the hole after all. So, um. Anyways, I should have known that, um, but I decide to go ahead and just tie this in a knot, and I fiddled with it for a little bit. I thought it was, a, it was a goner, but it ended up working, and I'm going to glue that down into the middle, and that's going to be the end of my bow, and um, I think she came out really cute. Um, I unraveled the ends just a little bit. Um, to give it more of a shabby look, but um, I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Next time, like I said, I'll close in um, with the camera so you can see it a little bit better, but um, definitely go check out this um, account um, that I linked down below for the file. Um, she's super duper cute, as is are all the files. So um, here's some close-ups here for you. Thank you. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Bye.